3.0 out of 5 stars. Comparing Hoover Cruise to Dyson DC44 Animal. 3.5 stars for the cruise, really, because money matters. This review is based on vacuuming hardwood floors with a few scatter rugs. While we still shudder at the price of the Dyson V6, we bought it refurbished and it was still expensive, we prefer it over the Hoover. The Hoover Cruise is less expensive than the Dyson, and is pretty good, but on close inspection we opt for the Dyson. It was fascinating to compare the two devices and see how the Hoover engineers had come in with a, let us call it homage to the Dyson concept. They came up with their own solutions and delivered a vacuum with just as much power that cost much less. However, comparing the two devices, battery, I like the way the Hoover Cruise lets you simply click a button to pull the battery and presumably replace it in the future. This is much tougher with the Dyson, where you have to look on YouTube to figure out how to disassemble, then find the hidden serial number, then search the internet for an aftermarket replacement, which are available. Noise, Dyson. While the two are within 2 dB of each other, 88 to 90 at 3 above the handle for the Dyson, 90 to 92 for the Hoover, the Dyson is subjectively quieter. The Hoover has a high, whiny pitch. However, neither is bad. Maneuverability, the Dyson is smoother. The Hoover swivels just as much, if not more, but it swivels unexpectedly, when you are trying to go straight, for instance, steering is touchy. On slash off switch, Hoover. The Hoover has a lever that can be pushed to hold the on button in the on position. Which is good, because there is a hard edge that hurts the top of my hand when I hold down the on button, so using the lever allows me to move my hand away from that edge. One has to hold down the on button for the Dyson all the time, but that actually hasn't he ever bothered me. Dust bin, this one is a tie. The Dyson has a smaller bin, and the hinge for the lid for it is set back from the edge of the opening, sorry, hard to describe, but suffice it to say the issue comes in with fine dust accumulating in the hinge area. I use a toothbrush to brush that area out, which is about 1 slash 4 deep. The Hoover seems to have a slightly larger dust bin, and its lid and hinge are better designed and have a nicer firmer snap when closing. However, when popping open the base of the dust bin, the filter doesn't release cat hair or dust bunnies. One then has to disassemble the entire dust bin in order to pull off the lighter debris. That reattachment is a finicky task. Powered beater brush, Dyson wins. The Hoover has an on slash off switch so the beater brush can be turned off on wood floors. It is very easy to remove to clean by simply pulling back on an arrowed section of the base, no instructions needed, and popping the brush out. This is superior to Dyson S design. The Hoover Cruise Beater Single Brush has soft blue tufts that appear to be spaced just slightly apart, so the tufts may not cover 100% of the floor or rug. But if you're rethinking that you're protecting your floors, take a look at the close-up photo of the beater brushes to compare, and see the scratches, after just one use, on the bottom piece of plastic that slides on the floor. I think adhesive backed felt would be an easy fix that is not even necessary if you are just vacuuming tile. Hoover could fix this easily with a piece of padding. By contrast, the Dyson designers have gone to much more effort. There are little rollers front and back and padding all around. There are two sets of brushes, one set of black, very soft, slightly longer brushes that are spread quite uniformly, instead of in tufts, across the width of the tube. Then there are some red, very stiff tufts, that would seem to be far more effective at beating a rug or carpet. See the photo. 
the stiff tufts would hit the surface of a wood floor, but very lightly. In the four months of using the Dyson, we have not yet noticed anywhere on the floor. The Dyson beater brush is on all the time. It is slightly less easy to clean, requiring a coin to insert into a slot to rotate, then the brush has to be pulled out of the resulting hole, it takes some time. On the Hoover Cruise, you slide a piece and pull out the brush easy. In examining the lower area of the machines, we noticed that the Hoover had, after just one use, accumulated quite a bit of softer, fuzzier debris along its corrugated tubing that is closest to the floor. The Dyson protects that area with some rounded plastic, and did not appear to have any accumulation, after four to five months of use. Weight, a tie. Suction, close. The Hoover cleans well but the Dyson sucks harder. Instructions and intuitive operation is a Hoover win, Hoover Cruise wins by far. Unlike those pretentious and puzzling pictographs Dyson is fond of, there are actual English instructions, and labeled pictures. Also, there are helpful little labels on the vacuum itself. Accessories Dyson has a bit of an edge here with an included smaller beater head for stairs but the Hoover is pretty easy to use on stairs with its regular head, so no big deal. I usually don't factor in cost in a comparison unless the difference is big. Well, it is big. Go with the Hoover Cruise to save money and get good performance. Go with a, refurbished, Dyson to get best performance. 5.0 out of 5 stars. A super lightweight, versatile vac that picks up as much fine dirt slash dander as the Roomba without the high cost. A friend recently commented that I practically had one vacuum for every room I had. Well, each room in my house seems to hold a special challenge for me. I do have a mix of hardwood floors, both oak and white pine, one laminate ceramic tile, and a couple of oriental rugs. Add to that mix a couple of docks and plenty of dirt and there you have the challenges. Throw in a mud pit of a dog pen and this old house can be a mess at times. If you have plush pile rugs and think the Hoover Cruise will do the job, think again and take a pass. I do have all kinds of vax, the friend wasn't he far off the mark and will tell you right now that the cruise has got to be the best cordless vac on the market. I have the Anchor and the Monster, both excellent dust and dirt chompers, but the power and the versatility of the cruise has them beat hands down. I even have a Roomba 800 series, but have retired him, Liam Neeson, Roomba wants us to name them, after a tumble down the stairs. The reason I even mention the Roomba is because the Hoover has one very interesting quality it has. When I was vacuuming, I noticed that the cruise was picking up that very fine dander and dust that so plagues me. The allergies kick in big time if I am not right up on it. Now, I vacuum, but now that I took my fans out of the window, figured a good fall cleaning was in order. There wasn't he much in the line of visible dirt in the room ID targeted to house the cruise, but when I vacuumed I was shocked, and pleased, at the amount of fine dust it sucked up. It has that Roomba-like capability of drawing in that very fine dust and dander. For such a lightweight vac, the cruise has the power of much more expensive vacs. Of course I am getting ahead of myself but I was so impressed with how much dust and dander the cruise pulled and how rapidly I could fill that canister. Assembly was quite intuitive and I only read the book after I did a thorough vacuuming in the bedrooms, which I need to really keep clean. The Hoover Cruise is a super lightweight vac that is perfect for seniors or those who can t-push a lot of weight. I have a meal and an Electrolux Silverado, but both of them are super heavy. And then there is my Bissell Trilogy, the vac that is touted as lightweight, but can't even compare to the cruise. 
and all of these are attached to a cord. The anchor is cordless and I love it, but the cruise even beats that by a mile. The cruise has an easy to empty canister and I can remove the whole thing to clean around the filter. I had to take it apart a couple of times because it was picking up so much fine dander. Lot S of pollen and dust came through those window fans, settling on the entire room. It didn't he help that the road next to use was graded, sending up even more dirt. Another feature I really liked was the fact that it has an on-slash-off trigger or I could flip a continuous power latch for extended vacuuming. I do know my vacs, including Roombas, but of all the cordless ones IBE tried, the Hoover Cruise is top of the line. Charging, the Hoover Cruise has an onboard Leon battery pack a pack that clicked into the body of the back quite easily. Conversely, I was able to pull it back out easily so I could check out the specs. It has a 21.6 V42.2 WH 2.0 AH battery pack. This brick is replaceable so not all is lost if it dies in a few years. Now, one of my Dirt Devil bags was discontinued and I have to special order bags. This is one of the nice things about the canister style bags I do love. No fuss, no muss, no bags. Charging the vac itself is easy. There is an AC charger, included, that is plugged into the charger inlet right on the body of the vac. It took no time at all to spot it. I was thinking that ID preferred direct access to the Leon brick so I could charge it on the counter but everything comes apart and it is not that difficult to charge. The anchor has to be placed in its base, a bit of a pain at times. Cleaning the cruise parts, the dust bar can be pulled for cleaning with the flip of a switch. If I get threads or hair get hung up in the brush, they can be pulled or clipped. One interesting thing about the cruise is the fact that everything is very well designed and quite well thought out making use almost intuitive. The Roomba S brush bar needs much more tending to and in comparison I am finding that the cruise is much easier to work with. The cup of the dust collector opens right up over the waste bit. If I want, and I did, I can remove the dirt cup entirely. It has a remove dirt cup button that is easy to spot. When I removed it, the filter was exposed and I could clean it off easily. That filter should be kept clean because with the finer dust and dander it can get quite clogged and the suction will go down. There is one additional post motor filter that should be washed under running water periodically. I will be leaving that out to dry overnight because the vac certainly doesn't need to smell. This particular filter is less fragile than the one in my anchor but care still should be taken when cleaning any of them. I wiped down everything with a slightly damp microfiber cloth after I was done because the body of the vac was a dust magnet itself. Vacuuming, upright mode vacuuming with the Hoover Cruise was a snap, but it took me a bit to get used to the swivel head. Now the swivel is a great feature because I can turn it to get under things and maneuver around things like my rocking chair or a desk. I do love the mobility, even more so than I have with the anchor, primarily because it is lightweight and picks up more dust and dander. I think my house has the corner on fine dirt, just saying. Right above the floor brush is a flex joint that turns readily. As I mentioned, I was able to maneuver it quite well as it has more flex than any of my backs. It is not at all stiff and the only thing is getting used to working with it. I was able to vacuum my bedrooms and hallway quite rapidly, especially since I didn't have to worry about a cord. I really couldn't believe how quickly the canister filled up with dust, dander, and fibers. There are no speeds, but rather only one to deal with. The battery doesn't take long to charge so there is no need to conserve. I don't need that power saving mode and expect that if I need a charge, 
it won't take long. The battery pack is quite solid and well protected. There are plenty of cautionary notes in the user manual, but a little common sense goes a long way. Vacuuming, handheld mode with the Hoover Cruise, I also got a dusting brush, a crevice tool, and a pet slash stair tool. Using the cruise in a handheld mode was especially easy because it is so incredibly lightweight. For example, I put the dusting brush on and was easily able to back along each ceiling slash wall met. I usually use a long, handheld duster, but rather than spread the dust around, it was collected in the canister. Each tool goes right into the handheld portion readily because each one is marked. They only go one way. There are enough attachments to get a wide variety of jobs done. I was primarily interested in using the cruise on the floor, but was quite pleased with the versatility. Of course there is that couch. The pet slash stair tool has silicone teeth comma making this tool really effective for pulling up dog hair off the couch. Once again, I need to impress upon the user that keeping those inner filters clean is a must for good suction. The cruise is a light duty vac, but for me it is a nice, versatile heavy duty cleaner for that lightweight nickling dust and dander. Anyone with allergies who needs to do battle with it will love this vac. Overall impressions, as I mentioned, I do have several VACs, including a Roomba, but each seems to have a different purpose. The Hoover Cruise has to be the best designed cordless IBE seen. It is quite easy to use and actually quite a powerful one with that 2-2V lithium-ion battery. I was quite impressed with the amount of fine dirt and dander it picked up. In this regard, it does as well as my Roomba ever did, but with less maintenance. The lightweight factor was yet another impressive feature. I had no problem holding up the vac with the reach wand in place to go along the ceiling edges. If I tried to do that with my Bissell, well, let us said I wouldn't bother. The cruise has taken the features of many of the best cordless vacs and improved on them. I don't have a Dyson, so can T comment on that, but I have enough facts to say for certain that I'd recommend this one in a second. Specs, brush roll shut off, yes. Dirt cup, bottom release. Steerable, yes. Wall mountable, yes. Filtration, standard. Removable brushes, yes. Scatter guard, yes. Product weight, 4.7 pounds. Tools included, crevice tool, dusting brush, upholstery slash stir tool. Safety rated, oh. Detachable hand vac, yes. Fingertip controls, yes. Swivel head, yes. Bagless, yes. Handle, yes. Dirt path, center dirt path. Power nozzle, yes. Removable nozzle, yes. Dirt cup capacity, 0.4 liters. Above floor cleaning reach, 15 feet. 4.0 out of 5 stars. Has Dyson met its match? It's a given that I will only vacuum if I can do it without hauling a heavy, corded vacuum cleaner around. So it's all cordless, lightweight stick vacs for me. I've been through several types and the Dyson motor head is the best of all the ones I tried. I love it. However, it does have a few minor drawbacks and it was worthwhile for me to check out this new Hoover Cruise. The Hoover compares favorably although I can't quite call it better than the Dyson, it's as good overall. It seems to be as effective at picking up dirt and dust and hair, which of course is the main thing. It holds a charge a lot longer than the Dyson The Dyson has never lasted more than 20 minutes on one charge at full power, but since I have a small apartment, 
20 minutes is usually enough. On the other hand, the Hoover lasts twice that long, so if I get a bee in my bonnet and decide to do the furniture and blinds as well as the carpet, I'm set. Both machines easily convert to a handheld dust buster and have the usual attachments. The Dyson handle is much more comfortable, even though the Hoover has a handy lock to keep your power switch depressed unlike the Dyson. The design of the handle made my hand tired on the Hoover, no problem with the Dyson. One thing I dislike about the Dyson is that the vents in the motor unit are arranged so that the air comes back at your face, especially if you are using the handheld option. The Hoover blows off to the sides, thank you very much. Both machines are very light and maneuverable and about the same degree of yuckiness when it comes to emptying the dust basket. Not sure I am ready to toss the Dyson, but this Hoover is a close competitor at a nicer price. 3.0 out of 5 stars. Comparing Hoover Cruise to Dyson DC44 Animal. 3.5 stars for the Cruise, really, because money matters. This review is based on vacuuming hardwood floors with a few scatter rugs. While we still shudder at the price of the Dyson V6, we bought it refurbished and it was still expensive, we prefer it over the Hoover. The Hoover Cruise is less expensive than the Dyson, and is pretty good, but on close inspection we opt for the Dyson. It was fascinating to compare the two devices and see how the Hoover engineers had come in with a let us call it homage to the Dyson concept. They came up with their own solutions and delivered a vacuum with just as much power that cost much less. However, comparing the two devices, battery, I like the way the Hoover Cruise lets you simply click a button to pull the battery and presumably replace it in the future. This is much tougher with the Dyson, where you have to look on YouTube to figure out how to disassemble then find the hidden serial number, then search the internet for an aftermarket replacement, which are available. Noise, Dyson. While the two are within 2 dB of each other, 88 to 90 at 3 above the handle for the Dyson, 90 to 92 for the Hoover, the Dyson is subjectively quieter. The Hoover has a high, whiny pitch. However, neither is bad. Maneuverability, the Dyson is smoother. The Hoover swivels just as much, if not more, but it swivels unexpectedly, when you are trying to go straight, for instance, steering is touchy. On slash off switch, Hoover. The Hoover has a lever that can be pushed to hold the on.